It had an elegant integrated environment, very like that of Smalltalk. It was purely object-oriented, but unlike Smalltalk, it used a fairly traditional sort of programming language. Now, at a time when Windows programming was really hard work, often done in C, it made remarkably easy work of writing fully visual Windows applications. It went through four major versions, ranging from the first for Windows 1 to the final fourth version for Windows 3.1. In many respects, it was way ahead of its time. So, why wasn't it a huge success? Why aren't we using it today? First, let me be clear what I'm talking about. It's this. Its name was Acta. It was developed by a company called the Whitewater Group. The first version was released in 1987 and the last version, 4.1, was launched in 1993. I think the version I first used back in the early 90s was, if I remember correctly, Acta 3. And at the time, I thought it was absolutely terrific. Well, just look at the programming environment. The code window, the class browser, uh, with the individual methods and their code shown in one pane, and the class hierarchy shown in another. Now, if you've used Smalltalk, this will look very familiar. But the actor language is nothing like small talk. At the time, many people thought that actor was the face of the future. You could see all sorts of reviews in magazines at the time, and you know, we thought this is something new and something innovative. Well, these days it's quite hard to find anything about actor online. Its Wikipedia entry is tiny, though there is a clip of a demo of actor from an early 90s TV show called The Computer Chronicles, which, if you're interested, is well worth watching. And you can also download copies of actor. Though, in order to run it, you will need an old version of Windows, Windows 3, 3.1, or Windows running inside a DOS emulator. Documentation of actor is sadly very hard to find. The best I've found is a, a manual for version 1 of actor. But if anybody knows of a manual for one of the later releases, a manual or some sort of explanatory documentation, please let me know in the comments. On the Computer Chronicles show that I mentioned just now, Bruce Newberger from the Whitewater Group said that the actor syntax was more traditional than small talk, so that C and Pascal programmers would find it very readable, and I would have to agree with him. For people used to a C-like language or a Pascal-like language, the Smalltalk syntax can undoubtedly be a big hurdle to get over. Now, Acta was, I think, a really good attempt at making a Smalltalk-like programming system for people who were accustomed to more conventional languages. You have to remember that back in the 80s and 90s, Windows programming using a language like C was really, really hard work. You had to get the handle of a window and its rectangle, that is, its, its position and dimensions, and when you moved a window, uh, well, you'd have to write code to repaint the contents of the window itself, and also to repaint anything, to refresh anything behind it that the window overlapped and would be revealed when you moved the window. Now, that involved a lot of pixel twiddling, and it was very complicated and very, very error-prone. Whereas in Acta, you could create a window with a single line of code, which was, for those days, astonishing. Anyway, in 1992, the Whitewater Group was acquired by Symantec. The final version of Acta was released in 1993, but by that time, Microsoft's Visual Basic, launched in 1991, was offering even easier visual programming for Windows, albeit without object orientation and without a small talk like development environment. Meanwhile, Borland, who were that, at that stage making early attempts at migrating their Turbo Pascal compiler to Windows, well, they got their object-oriented framework, or OWL as it was called, from the Whitewater Group. Borland also made use of a visual design tool, the resource editor, and that too was created by the Whitewater Group. Borland, however, was not to be the saviour of Acta. A couple of years after Acta's final release in 1995, Borland launched Delphi, an object-oriented version of Pascal with a pretty slick Windows development environment. 
So Okta was one of those software products that really at the time seemed it could have been quite big, but for various reasons didn't quite make it. And it's now really not much more than a footnote in computer programming history. But I think it's quite an interesting footnote. Anyway, that's it for now. If you'd like me to look at other forgotten software gems, let me know in a comment down below and I'll see what I can find.